Welcome to Solibri Model Checker webinar for trial users. Agenda for this session is opening and adding models, basic navigation in 3D, basics of checking, communication and information takeoff. When you open the SMC for the first time, you will enter the recent files. This is your working table where you can see the latest files that you have been working with and the recent model places. In top of the view you have File, Model, Checking, Communication and Information Takeoff Layouts. This is the process which contains different functionalities and different steps during your checking. In File menu you have File Handling, uh, Commands, Opening, Adding, updating models, saving, saving with a name, and closing. You can open the model from the menu, from the recent files here, and you can pin uh, your favorite model on the table. Before opening any files, we should go to the settings. Here in layouts, you have a restore button if you lose any of the windows within these layouts during your checking you can restore the default settings back here you can also create your own environment and save it with a name and use that in general settings you ha can choose the language show tooltips show role selection role is a set of resources that is attached to certain tasks that you, do, you need and uh, definitions that you can use uh, during your checking. User. User information comes from the uh, license server and you can set your reporting identity, your initials and the organization in Solibri Solution Center. Remember me it should be ticked so you don't have to give your credentials every time you open the SMC. If you prefer working with any of these other languages remember that you have to install the software with a certain language pack from the installer and then you restart the software and the language is available. Units, please check that you have the correct units on your use with the correct amount of decimals and with the uh, date format that you prefer. The other settings you can change during the checking with the tool or come here to see more details of them. In help you have uh, links to online help. You can get help from the support, leave your message, your file where you have the problems. If you need any instructions with using the SMC, you can contact support. Feedback, if you have any feedback concerning the support or the product, uh, can be left there as well. You can read your extensions that you have loaded. You have links to Solitary Solution Center to your products that you are uh, already using and have downloaded and here is the opportunity to borrow the license for temporary usage. If you have any problems with the performance of your computer please copy the information in this list, use the copy to clipboard and send it to support and we will see through the details and we will be able to help you with your problem. Let's open the first IFC file. You can open it here in the recent files or you can go into the model layout. In model layout we have three views. 3D view showing the building geometry, model tree showing the models and the uh, structure of them and the detailed information. If you click open, you can browse the model IFC file 
and get it in to your SMC session. The link to the existing IFC file remains, but now you have uh, inserted the IFC file into SMC. When you get a new IFC file, SMC wants you to ensure the discipline and the short name. Discipline information is read from the IFC file and you can click the heading and you choose the correct discipline if it's not set correctly. Short name, double click and you can give a short name for the file. This is a, any kind of combination code for this building, this discipline or your own personal marking to separate the data. For example, an information takeoff, you will be able to see easily if any column is uh, architectural column or structural column. Okay. In the model tree, you can see the whole model and tree structure. You have the IFC file. IFC file can contain only one site and each site should contain only one building and every building should consist from floors and the floors must be defined and every floor contains components. Here we have separate structure for spaces. All the spaces should be also modeled. In the model tree view you can click any of the components. You can see the details in the info table of this column. You can see it's uh, highlighted in a 3D view and if you double click the column line this component is brought to you in the 3D view. Info table here in info view contains all the detailed data. The IFC file has its own identification information, file name, schema, uh, the standard revision that has been created with, file name, who created it, and also the timestamp when it has been exported site has the identification information location and relations to other levels of this IFC and same with the project floor and then into the column one component level it has the information here the black text on the tabs means that this information is analyzed, collected by Solibri and the blue tabs show the details that has been listed from the IFC file. All this information comes from the IFC according to settings, how the designer has exported the IFC. You can't add in any information or remove anything. In model tree, we have four different ways to show the structure for this IFC file. This is the containment hierarchy. Now we have active. Second is component hierarchy. You have folders showing each column categories, layer hierarchy, the layer uh, categories of the original design and then we have the federated floors where the merged model is gathered under the architectural floor so you can easily see for example the ground for uh, components at one uh, setting. Plus, one, uh, plus, minus and equals are selection basket functions so you can take selections from any of these hierarchies add, remove and set this selection to uh, containment of your 
selection basket. In 3D view, we have uh, visualizing and navigation tools. And here you can do the visual checking for the building. You can do it either for the one uh, model only, one file, or if you need to, you can do it with the merged model. If you want to add in another model, you can do it in the model tree. With the right mouse click, you can get a pull-down pull menu. Here you have Add Models. And now you can add in a structural model, for example. Again, you have to ensure the discipline, give the short name, and there you have the same logic tree structure for the structural model. If you have several models, for example, like here, we have the ventilation. So you can add in several uh, models at the same time. Like this. And if you forget to change the check, the discipline, you can activate the file and with the right mouse click, you can set the discipline uh, into correct setting. With the right mouse click, there is a list of commands available. Now we have the full building here. Now, when you're doing the visual checking, you are doing it in a 3D and you have a few commands there that you can use. First, on the top of the 3D view, you have undo, redo commands. Then, with the little black uh, triangle showing that there's a menu, we have panning, spinning, walking, and gaming modes. Pan, uh, you press down the left mouse button on top of the model, and you can see the blue time diamond appearing, and you can pan and move the model. Spin. Again, with the left mouse button, you can touch any of the components and the red hemisphere appears on the top of the touched component. And that is the origin of the rotation. Now you can freely rotate your building. And after all these uh, commands, you can see numbers. Those are the shortcut keys, so you can change between the modes from the keyboard. One, two, three, or four. When you have the spinning mode on, at the same time, if you're using a wheel mouse, you can press down the wheel and have the panning on, and you can scroll in and out using the wheel, uh, rolling it back and forth. Walk mode sets you on the level of uh, eyesight being 1.5 meters height on this certain floor that you are at the moment and on the lower right corner you can see a lo little map. This map shows you that you are on a roof level now. If you click the heading you can take a shortcut to the ground floor. You can also use this map as a shortcut to get yourself into uh, any location of the building. It's very approximate, but you will be closer to the point uh, required. When you're in a walking mode, uh, 3D view is divided into four sections, and in the middle you have your eyesight view, and if you press down the left mouse button in the center, you will be walking forward when you move your mouse above that center point and below that center point you will be walking backwards. And this again, right side to the right, left side to the right. Le left, of course. And then you can enter the building from the exit doors. You can uh, walk up the stairs. Now you can see those uh, walls are flashing quite um, strongly. So if you want to do only architectural checking, 
I recommend that you take only the architecture, put it into selection basket. Let's turn off the spaces and now you have only architectural model available. Now you will be able to take the check only for the architecture. But if you need the structure, as usual we do, and the others, you can have the full model visible, removing this from the selection basket. Selection basket can be opened here, add view on the top of the view, and you can dock any of these windows taking from the a gridded area below the heading. Now you can see that there is something in the selection basket. Let's remove it and show the full model. But if it does uh, disturb you that it flashes, so this is the way to handle it. Okay, we are on this uh, first floor <coughs> balcony now, and if you want to ask any uh, details of the components. You can just click any of the components on your walk and if you press down the control button you will be able to turn your head and take a peek around while you're walking. That stops the walk mode and then you can continue your walking. If you press down the control button you will be able to walk, uh, run through and while walking the further you go from the center point with your arrow, the faster you are walking. You can get into your, uh, any rooms from the doors. And if you wish to walk through the wall, press C, like Cecilia. And now you can see that on the lower left corner, the collision detection is switched off or on. And when it's off, you will be able to walk through the walls. like this. We have also game mode where you can set the direction and the orientation for your uh, visual with your mouse and using uh, arrows, buttons, okay, and then when you have the collision detection off you will be able to move freely in the building and uh, again if you set your um, eyesight upwards with the mouse, you will be dropping yourself through the uh, slabs as well. You can see uh, the shortcut keys with the tool from the tooltip, and you can uh, check out from the gaming mode from the ESC button. My favorite is spinning. And, and scrolling with the mouse uh, and in practice this has turned out to be the most effective way. And now when I, you can see that I'm uh, lost here around the building, you can see the yellow arrow moving in. Okay, I seem to be somewhere in the space. So that's how easy it is to just fly away. Now walking and navigating takes a little practice. It's not difficult. You will learn it quite easily. Next menu is for the visualizing. You have the info. So if you click any of the components, you will see the details changing. And again, you can see how the information amount of the information, number of values given here, changes uh, between the components. Next we have selection tool and if you click any component it will be straight in the selection basket. With the control button down you can select several components and when you reselect the same, you will be removing it from the selection basket. If you want to do aerial uh, selection, press down left mouse button, keep it steady for a second, 
don't move it, keep the button down, you will have the selection box and now you can stretch the area. All those components that are touching even a little bit the area will be selected. And from left to right all those components that are completely inside the area will be selected. Hiding tool, you can hide a component but you cannot just toggle it on or off, you have to either press the show all button or do undo command. Markup tool, you, we have simple tools to do markings. You can draw your markings and you can see there is a green frame appearing and while this frame is active you can move and stretch the marking to correct size for example. You can add in single line text here. And this is for the purposes to show that here is the issue. The comments, the instructions are given in communication. Now, okay, if you need to send this quickly to someone, you can copy, paste it, Control C, Control V, or you can use the right mouse button and there's copy snapshot. And you can copy this, attach it into your email and there it goes. Other option is also that you go to communication and you make a new presentation and you make manual notes presentation and collect these pictures here. When you activate the issue on the list or here the little icon you can add in the details. You can add in markups, arrows, lines, ellipses, revision clouds. But pay attention that when you make a markup, the markup is set on the surface of the component that you touched. It's like a sticker. Best way to show it is to make an arrow here and it comes through the slab. So it takes a little practice how to uh, locate the markings. And again, if you want to get this information forward to someone, you can activate only the markings, not the stamps. Th this is one thing. And you can uh, go to the communication and add a new issue and collect this information here. You can take snapshots, those will be saved on the background of this model. And you can continue with your checking, visual checking here, and collect your observations this way. In markup tools we have uh, the component stamp, we have coordinate stamp, uh, the yellow magnet snap appearing shows exactly the point that you touch and that uh, those coordinates will appear on the stamp. You can add in a logo, change the color for the next markings, change the line weight and if you want to in the settings you can do the same but using the filter you can set the properties for the component stamp. Let's clean up the model a little bit and go forward. Dimension, if you check, touch any of the components, you can see the yellow uh, snap again appearing. It picks up an edge and now gives you a dialog where you can see if you're choosing the edge or if you want to know the shortest distance between two components or take the distance between those three points and if you want to see the difference between those points you can see that as well. If you want to uh, just 
control the settings right away, you can press down the control button and choose the components. With the alt button, you can choose between two different points. And again, like the component stamp or any other marking, if you choose, let's see, for example here, this is a very common thing to happen. The marking is inside a component disappearing. You can't uh, stretch it, you can't extend the uh, extension line or change the location of the text, but you can use the transparency tool. This is the best way to show uh, the correct information. takes a little practice as well. Sectioning. Choose the sectioning function from the menu and now touch uh, any component with the right mouse click and you can see the blue section plane appearing. Press down the shift, but shift button on your keyboard. Keep it down and now left mouse button down push the um, section plane to define the depth. And now you can see the section in the building. If you want to see the other side of this section, you can press backspace on your keyboard and the section will be flipped over. If you need more sections, you can do a new section turning, rotating the model, and touching another surface. Very visual. You can't do a new section through an existing section plane. Section plane that is active is always the blue one, inactive are the green ones. You just click and touch the section plane. You can have six section planes like section box into one model. If you keep uh, your shift button down, scroll with your mouse wheel, you will be able to stretch all those planes at the same time and adjust the depth. Or you can just click one plane active and change the section from there. And if you have the need to rotate, the section you can press X on your keyboard or Y to rotate and you cannot reset uh, in the zero zero position this you just have to make a new section very easy very visual and if you need to do markings and you want this blue section plane to disappear press T like a transparent and it will disappear for a moment. And now you can make your own markings and again collect more notes. Uh, after sectioning, there's only transparency tool, and there you can see through the components. Now we have several components here toggle on or off. It's very handy, for example, when you're uh, checking above the suspended ceilings. Or checking uh, shafts or very narrow places. So you can set the component transparent. And on the transparent component, you can do your marking again and leave your note to other participants of the project. Like this. We have visibility 
up icons here on the brown box let's take this one away brown box shows all restores the whole model the box with one side blue only shows the selected from the selection basket and the light blue box shows the unselected transparent let's see if I take the components uh, hierarchy check all the doors set them as my selection basket now you can see that they are all here all doors and the rest of the oh the red ones are this is interesting the ventilation so so brightly let's take the doors back and let's paint them there's a paint bucket so you can paint them with the color and now let's see you can see the red doors more vividly here this is interesting how the uh, ventilation pops up so brightly here but this is the way for example a ventilation or any valves you can just paint them and locate them more easily within the building if you take the architectural model big a ground floor for example the, to be only view now we have the ground floor the rest of the building will be transparent of course those doors are still transparent uh, <coughs> sorry red so we have to remove the paint from the selected com uh, components and the visible components and now the building is again intact and now you can see there's uh, green boxes here we have preset selection of showing or hiding spaces as a default all the spaces are hidden in a component hierarchy you can see components called space these are the zones that are modeled and they must be there in the architectural model to be able to do a proper checking in visibility list we have different groups of components that you can turn off and on uh, there's no indication of what all you have turned off the last command is only shown here on the top of the view very typical uh, magnifying glasses zooming tools and then we have again another menu where we have preset selection of different views for this building and if you use for example front view with the next button uh, with the white box you can change the view into orthogonal view the traditional elevation drawing is available this way and this is on and off the second one from the right there's a hide navigation map if you have a large model with a lot of spaces and very complex I recommend you to turn this off once you have learned the, uh, how the layout works uh, it can slow down the big model and the last one on the list we have footprints there is space info the information about the space modular grid as a graphical info and a footprint showing the geometry of these components uh, today you can use also the dimension uh, tool here and it notices the lines between the modular uh, lines unfortunately this information cannot be stretched or attached into uh, inside locations of the model 
on the top of the basic toolbar we have the add view icon where you can add views like we did the selection basket and then we have a quick search where you can use the wildcard like star and all those components containing any of the strings codes markings that you are looking for can be found this way for and the star uh, is replacing a string several characters dollar one sign so you can find all those components containing the OOR combination anywhere in its information you can activate that uh, search with the enter or using the binoculars. There's a link to videos and our online help. So basically we have done the uh, visual checking here, uh, navigation tools, naviga uh, visualizing tools are all now in our usage. Now we should proceed to rule-based checking. In checking layout, we have the tools and views for rule-based checking. When you enter the checking layout, SMC wants you to choose a role. Here, the role is set of resources. These are the typical checks that, a, for example, architecture uh, makes to ensure the quality of the model. There is classifications. Uh, information takeoff, there is preset rules, and there is templates for reporting in this set. And today we are checking, doing the architectural checking as an example. In this list you can see the, those uh, rule sets that has been included into architectural role, and the blue ones are those defaults that we start with. yellow post-it uh, sign appears here to show that we have to do certain tasks before going to checking. So we have to verify the classification. Classification here means that all those components have definitions that they are classified as certain types of components. Like here we have different types of columns and doors and you can see this that there is internal doors external doors there's revolving doors exit doors and so on so IFC component can be many types of uh, components when check their type of uh, usage purposes there's classification rules where you have the filter, how each of these walls sets into certain category. That is verified. No need to uh, do any classification details there. We can see the user interface in checking layout. We have here uh, checking view, something is, seems to be missing. Now it looks like a default. Still we have something missing. This is interesting. My apologies for this. Um, in checking view we have checking uh, tools and rule sets. These are the rule sets uh, divided into certain categories and the rules uh, underneath that in the tree structure again. So you can see that there is model structure, component, 
dimension, floor heights, clearances, deficiencies, uh, the spaces are checked, their properties and locations, and then there's intersections. So we are doing a lot more than just collision or intersections. And all these can be parameterized by you. When you can open more rule sets and run the checking, and then you will receive uh, results. You have critical, moderate, and low severity results, rejections, and accepted results. Okay, we have found that there is the necessary information that is required, or if there's just um, dash, it means that there is no such components to be checked. In result summary you can see that how many the overall situation how many similar issues you have in this model. You can report the overall situation checkbox list, box list uh, what rules has been checked here in Excel format you can take a result summary, see the number information, how the checking was done here. These are the tools for beam coordinators. But the designer's work, the checker's work, is mainly that they go through these results one by one. You open the tree, go to the triangle level, and see the actual result double click and you can see the component. If you touch the component I can see that this is suspended ceiling. So it's made with a wall tool defined as a suspended ceiling so I can easily accept it. How to make a decision? In the results with the right mouse click I have a pull down menu. There I can add slide so I can make notes again. I can accept this. I can assign this to be checked for architect. I can add also add in a person and leave a comment. For this person you can see the location where it is and you can add description of this issue by yourself or add the default coming from the rule once you are ready you can turn this uh, close this view you can dock it here if you want to and continue then you go further when you have no issue details available. The issue details is turned gray until you activate another issue. Add slide, make the necessary decisions, assign it, fill in the information, comment and proceed forward. With the double click on the triangle level here in the results you will see what is the problem. In the information view you can see the textual details of this issue. And again you make a slide, you assign You can use names, you can use disciplines, uh, any kind of team names, uh, just as you wish. One by one, this is your professionality, you go these issues one by one. Now in this case, for example, we have several, several issues of same type, so you can do one slide from all of them. coordinate, comment, and proceed. See the details. 
if you need to, you can make the view transparent to be able to see the correct information, graphical uh, markings of this issue, and proceed. You can start with going through all the critical issues, for example, and check them and go through the most critical issues. This is also something that is your specialty as a designer to notice what is the critical issue to be reported forward and whom to report it to. Here, for example, we have two components inside another. Definitely an issue. And again, go forward one by one. Now, when you go through these issues, it's good to take a little look what kind of rules there are and and see those rules, what they are checking and what is necessarily at what point of project at each time. You can also make a straight acceptance uh, decision here on the menu. For example, here the spaces uh, don't have doors. Uh, these are open spaces, no doors required, so you can accept them right away. When you go through these issues, you can see that when you click any of the level, you can see the little house icon appearing that tells you that you have already handled this issue and there is a slide that you have created. So this is how the uh, proce uh, procedure goes. Once you have done the checking, you should comment and report these issues to other participants. And now you're ready to go to communication. In communication layout, you have tools to build up presentations and report your findings, observations to other project participants. You have similar views there as seen before. You have the 3D, like as earlier. There is the last active view that we did a note from in the model layout. This is the active slide, as you can see changes accordingly. All those texts markings are here there even though we haven't uh, saved them in, in the model layout. This is a snapshot situation though this is an active view. Here you can adjust, change, update the view if you want to show the issue from another side you can add in another view. One slide can contain two pages. You can fill in the details that we saw the details view in checking as well. There are a few new views. Presentation where you can create new collections, new presentations list of issues in each presentation and you can see the little thumbnails of those issues in a sorter. Now you want to collect those uh, slides that you created in a checking. We make a new presentation and we do the re uh, presentation from checking results. Here you can see uh, three different uh, sets. These are the rule sets that we opened uh, to go through. 
it is good to think and deviate uh, the workload a little bit so you should report the correct things to a correct person or correct team so as an example I'm making here the BIM report oh BIM issues are collected in one I'm taking only the BIM validation I'm making the next presentation check from checking results and now I handle only the spaces and the third one I do from the architectural issues so this way the message goes to the right person from the right issue and you don't have two or three hundred pages of issues that doesn't concern your design all the presentations are listed here in the presentation view when you change it the list below here in the issue list shows the content of this presentation and this thumbnail views are active in the issue sorter when you click any of the line issue details appear now you can still change the, any of the details you can comment here you can update the view or add in another view you can fill in the information that you need to either presentation by presentation or you can just select all the presentation and handle them in one session in presentations we have several issues and sometimes it's good to take a little look how they are built up in issues list you can see different columns the information can be arranged according to the first left column here so it organizes these issues you can use responsibility status as a criteria to arrange this information and again once you click any of the lines issue activates you can also change it from the issue short in issue sorter you can see all these presentations active at the same time and if you see that this issue for example here is in the wrong place you can drag and drop it to another presentation and if you want to you can copy and paste it between the issues uh, presentations I mean and the issue list if you don't want to see all these details you can turn off and on these uh, columns you can arrange the in information but if you want to for example see all those issues that concern Walter you can just flag those lines and see only those that are concern Walter and now add in more details there in 3d view you can see the same type of information available there again and in the 3d view if you need to go to the meeting for example you can activate a full screen mode uh, conference mode assign more people uh, and responsibilities add in common comments during the uh, meeting and design what is the uh, status or you can also give a new status to a issue and turn back to normal communication layout 
You can report all these presentations. You can present. Uh, you have possibility to uh, report all of the content, only the flagged ones to Walter, for example. You can do it in, in different ways. You can do the BCF, mean collaboration format, makes a zip, and anybody having the model of any, any of these disciplines using a software that supports BCF file can read that BCF zip. You can make a PDF rich text format. You can edit that and create a PDF from there if you want to add in the information. Or you can do an Excel report. And as an example, it collects here the details of the issue details in this list. And if you want to archive these, you can do a report, report all, and make your own notes and save the combo for yourself. Once the, uh, the comments have been done and you want to update your model, you select the presentation. You can update the presentation from the existing BCF. Just check it from there. Or you can make a new presentation and take the comments and make a new uh, presentation from there. Mm -hmm. Now we have the commenting tools here ready. Once we have handled all the issues, commented them, reported, assigned, set the priorities, we are ready to go forward. Either we start from the model, we update the new models, or we go to the information takeoff. In information takeoff, you can select predefined uh, definitions for information takeoff. Here, you can collect the data of this model. You have again the 3D view the whole house here. Uh, To-do list reminds you to do the checking. The finish it thoroughly. And here in the model tree you can see those files and you now you need the selection basket here as well. And you need the classifications if required. In information takeoff view, you have the possibility to collect the information like any table, Excel table for example. We have columns. If you double click, you can see the column definition. There is a column type, what type of information you are collecting and what kind of value you are looking for. These can be organized uh, in different ways as well. But let's see, you have options to take off all of spaces, you take off selected or update all the ITOs you have. If you take off all, uh, post it appears to remind you, you can see the basic information here collected about the spaces. If you take only the first floor, set it into your selection basket, you can take off the selected. Now it gives you only the information of the first floor, the selected components. 
and you can update all those uh, information takeoffs that you have listed here. In building elements, take off all, again take off anyway, you will get the detailed information about the components. If you want to, you can arrange the information, drag and drop the column, and the information will be arranged from left to right. With the right mouse click on the heading of the column, you can add in new column. Again, you define what type of information you want to, what property set and what value you want to return. One good tip is that you select the components and there you can see this is the type of information you are looking for. These are the property sets and these are the values that are listed. Let's add in new column. Property sets are the blue ones. Space boundaries you can see here as well. Oh, this is not a space component. Quantities. Oh, you can't touch this here. And all those values are listed. You can also report all this forward in a simple Excel file. And you can use it for the pick list in any other software, for example, uh, um, any financial evaluation mm, usage. Or you can take a little detailed using any of those uh, templates, examples that we have. Get the details in there. And if you want to, you can also edit and create your own template and collect the right keys on the columns and do the reporting that way. If you want to make a new uh, definition, you give it a name, description, and set in the components that you want to return. This is the process in short. And once you have done this, you go add in the models. You check them step by step. Comment. Make decisions. Communicate. And then take the information take off. If you want to update the files, you can choose any of the file here. With the right mouse button, you can update the models different ways. You can take it automatic, manually, or be prompted when the file is uh, replaced in the folder. You can also move or rotate the models. You give the delta value or you use the dimension tool to change the location of the model. Here in the file uh, menu, you have also uh, settings for the roles. You can access the solution center, update your extensions, and there is also a link to separate user interface where you can do uh, rules at managing. You can read the example rules here. And here you have your own space where to edit and check how the rules work. And you can study the parameters here as well. This is all for the trial webinar. Very basic information about the SMC. And once you have done everything, you have to save the model. And remember that now it is saved as .smc 
and all this information is included in the model. This model can be read in viewer but not edited. If you have any questions, more details from support at soligra.com. I thank you for uh, participating and listening our webinar. Wish you all a good day and welcome to Solibri users.